I am so honored to work with Veronica Robles on this project and to have her as a neighborhood salon luminary. Veronica is truly a testament to leaving something for the future and is incredibly powerful. So it feels like everywhere she goes, she is manifesting project upon project and her voice and her musicianship is just so compelling. After I first heard her, I just wanted to listen to her over and over and over again. And also this parallel between her story and Gardner's story, she's been very brave and beautiful in her sharing with the world and encouraging us to take advantage of every day. And I love this idea that Gardner left her museum for the enjoyment of the public forever. And Veronica Robles has established a cultural center for the enjoyment of the public forever. And to have both of those those qualities and those skills as both such an Im impressive musician and then to also be such an impressive organizer both of her musical company and this cultural center and all types of projects that she puts her hands on um, with such joy and such warmth and such encouragement for others it's it's really beautiful to behold <laughs> Seeing someone so important in your life as a woman, which is a child, it, 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 it leaves you empty. I mean, you feel empty because for me, being a mother and then suddenly you don't have your child with you, thinking that you will probably go, go away first and then suddenly you, you, you are the one who stays. So it's, it's a lot of uh, emotions and, and you need something to fill in that hole that is inside of you and your soul and your mind. So looking into my soul and finding uh, those feelings that I had before my daughter passed away, it's how I uh, overcome and I, I find uh, the, the, the time, I find the moments, I find the inspiration to be able to bring joy to the people. For me, art is that, art is a way of healing. Uh, any kind of art, in my case it's performing arts, and I, I think in Isabella's case was uh, a, her um, admiration for the artist and their, and their art, and, and she wanted just to make sure to be able to use her time to collect these beautiful pieces of art and bring it to, to the people so everybody had the opportunity to, to see it and enjoy it, and, it's, and I think it's the same thing. If I, if I wasn't an artist and if I, ha if I didn't have the art, I don't think I wouldn't be able to bear with the pain and the sorrow in my, in my soul, uh, honestly. I mean, this is all I do. Sometimes people ask me, but why are you doing this and why are you doing that? And I'm like, because I need it. I just need to do this. La pena y la que no es pena, lloruna, todo es pena para mí. Pena y la que no es pena, llorona, todo es pena para mí. Ayer lloraba por verte, llorona, y hoy lloro por que te vi. The art piece that I am responding to is actually uh, the story of Isabella, her life story about losing her child. And, and, and her miscarriage. So uh, it's, uh, it's similar to my story. I lost my only child, but she was older. She was a teenager. And I also am a cancer sur survivor, so I would never be able to have uh, children anymore. So that's why I, I got inspired by her story, but also I see a lot of similarities be between her and, my, and myself. And with the cultural center, uh, that I uh, founded, uh, there is also that connection with her. When I heard the story about the Isabella, it really touched my heart because it's very personal and I felt identified with her uh, because 
the, the powerful emotions of presenting something for other people to enjoy out of your sorrow and your heart and your mind and spirit uh, so you can bring joy to others through art is a powerful experience and, and for us as an artist um, we give so much from from within and sometimes people don't see that they just so see the art but they don't see what's behind it but after my daughter passed away I never thought that I would be able to do that again and but then I had a, a performance with children, which is one of my favorite audiences, young audiences. And that very special performance that I did, the very first one after my daughter passed away, it was this amazing thing that happened, maybe because it's just life gives you those signals for you con to continue go on. And I'm, I'm feeling that that's what happened to Isabella, the, the calling of art, to make uh, people, you know, uh, feel better, right? And leaving something be beyond her. Isabella was healed by art and she wanted to be give that gift to the public. She threw herself into building the museum shortly after the death of her husband. And it was through grief that she built something alive. And I know you have, um, the museum has a portrait of Jackie, right? And what room is it? Um, the, so the portrait is, is closed. It's actually, it's in the little salon and it's in a closed box and it wasn't open. Um, it, so it wasn't something that people could see if they visited the museum. Um, it's kind of just closed in a box. It's hand painted on ivory and has his name and his his birth and death date on the back. Um, and it was a like a keepsake memento of her son. I also feel related with that um, story because mm -hmm. although it took me a long time to, for me to talk about my daughter in, in, in public. And I think in one of my performances just came out from my word without me thinking with, from my mouth because I felt her presence on me. And that moment also was transformational because I, although I had connection with my audiences all the time, but that day I felt something stronger because it's something that we all share. Like we have life and we have dead in our lives for sure, but we don't talk about it. We all share things like this, death and life, loss and grief, and how we can all be part of one momentum where everybody connects through art, any, any kind of art, any discipline of art, and any language. And that's what she's giving us. And talking about something so precious, because you don't want to talk about it. First, because it hurts. Second, because you don't want people to just talk about her or, or, your, or the person you love that is not longer with you. But and at the same time, you don't want them to, you don't want to forget to your, to your loved one. And so you want to keep it for yourself. So I, I, I feel with that, with that um, information that you've given me, why it's close, right? I feel like that was her her idea of, okay, you know that I have this beautiful thing happening in my life and it's here, but it's, it's, it's mine. I have to create my own, you know, a place where people would be able to enjoy and not only to watch it, but I love uh, people um, be part of it. I love people to experience the, the art. So, and, and putting together um, the cultural center and actually find a place, a, a, a physical space that it was what I, my vision is, not that anybody else wants. It's something that I think because I like it, there will be more people to like it. We need alternatives. So we need alternatives and I, I see myself as an alternative for other people to inspire people to 
uh, get other people to know a new culture, a new way of arts, and also pass it on to the new generations. So I was commissioned to uh, respond to one of the uh, pieces of art at Isabella, so I decided to respond to her story. I decided to, uh, to choose a song uh, which is La Llorona. Thinking about Llorona, thinking, you always think about somebody crying for their children or a child in our case. So that was the connection. I said, this, this must be the, 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 the song that I choose. I wanna sing and I wanna dance and I wanna do everything I, I know what, how to do and, and connect it to, to the story of Isabella. <laughs> Un día llorona cuando al pasar yo te vi. My goal with this project is that people see Isabella, don't see the building, you know, because mm -hmm. I often hear of the people, oh, the, the, I mean, they talk about the beautiful artists uh, and art that we have there, but who was the person who put all her energy and time? It was a person and it was Isabella. And my goal with this project is that people see beyond the walls and see the soul of Isabella because Isabella is, exists, she is with us. Uh, I just want yes. the people from now on, if they see this project, when they go visit Isabella uh, Museum, think about her. It's amazing how she was so ahead of you know, time. And, and the museum is beautiful. She was a, an amazing artist beyond, you know, it's, she decide, designed pretty much the building, right? Yes, and, and the galleries and where all the artworks go, um, it was, it's a total work of art. And some people have also described it as a self-portrait. The process was um, a, trying to uh, create an, a special arrangement that has voice and then add up my beautiful fellow musicians they, that are all women. Uh, so how one, I, I wanted to include the violin and the trumpet. And then my husband also, who's been very supportive, uh, supportive on, on, with me on, on the process of losing our child. And, and for me, it was very interested because also Isabella has, has had her uh, husband with her, helping her with the museum and the, and the art. And uh, so I also included him in the, in the process. He was the one who uh, made the arrangement. La Llorona, uh, it's, it was originally written in, um, in a language from Oaxaca. But I choose to uh, sing a part of uh, with a, the, the original language of the Aztec people, which is Nahuatl. The, the lyrics are very simple. Uh, it's hard to translate it to, to, to Spanish or to a, any other language. But uh, in, in Spanish, uh, the one of the verse that I makes me cry, there's a couple of them, but the last one that says, the verse says, dos besos llevo en el alma, llorona, el último de mi madre y el primero que te di. And the translation will be, I keep two kisses close to my heart and my soul and my memory. The last one that my mother gave me and the first one that I gave to you. So that's one of the, the, the parts of the songs, which is the last part of the song that really touches my heart. Uh, how do you channel, channelize your, your emotions, your sadness into a project um, and decide to to do it. Resilience over grief and loss um, and the power of art to help us through. <laughs>